these are the critical uh, issue economics and or economy and business because this is the the place where our material wealth is produced the governments do not produce wealth they, they distribute <laughs> yeah we could uh, but anyway I will focus on uh, the micro, mostly from a microeconomic uh, perspective. However, I will be crossing a line. But the, our task is by the workshop, uh, this workshop designer, is to respond to these basic questions. We have many more questions, of course, and uh, I, I will raise and uh, Eric. Um, but. Uh, what is the role of uh, business and economy in the evolution of uh, global uh, governance? As I mentioned yesterday and today, Marcel was also showing that uh, big corporations are much more uh, involved in global uh, governance of uh, managing resources than the government, the, the intergovernmental organizations. They are much more internationalized, diversified in terms of the the uh, management staff and so on from different countries, different races and so on. And the second question, uh, how, we, how can we positive potential better utilize, better harness? And how the third is how we could eliminate or reduce, minimize negative contributions of business and uh, and uh, uh, the economy. So, <laughs> I, I would like to, to start with the urgency of, of getting uh, involved in the area where are the major resources. I mean, the, we want to get the business involved in responding to the climate change. We have, like, according to the latest uh, IPCC reform, about 10, 15 years to react. And if the resources are over there, so we want them to respond. So, uh, as our funding godfather of uh, World Academy of Art and Science, Albert Einstein used to say, you cannot uh, solve the emerging the problems, uh, uh, new problems, emerging problems, emerging challenges with the methods, with the approaches which cause them. So you need to be innovative. So it means that uh, we need to look for innovative uh, solution. And so what is the most important uh, source? I mean human capital. It's the, mo the, the only creative capital which is unlimited. But how we will use it? Uh, this is this is the issue we we'll, we we'll talk already and uh, we will come back to academia and uh, one specific type of human capital uh, is the entrepreneurship in general terms not only in business but public and civic organizations so I define the uh, entrepreneurship as securing meeting the basic needs and reduce in reducing threats to society, to the environment, uh, threat to sustainability by offering innovative allocation of resources and this way reducing the threats and meeting uh, satisfying the needs. So I want to focus in my introductory comments on two major stakeholders of these seven I have mentioned here on companies and academia. Companies because they have the most of the resources, what they control. Uh, and then we, I mean, they have the private sector. Uh, and then the major challenge is how to move them from doing business as usual to do business in a sustainable way. Because if we will be able to convert corporations as well as small, medium business in sustainable way, we'll be safe. And then we could, you know, maintain our global resources well. 
So there are two major approaches, traditional sort of external pressure by regulations or by NGOs. I practice in NGOs, this stuff, and also I help to design some regulations. But I want to focus on the second approach, to use internal forces. I remember the famous uh, song of Sting during the Cold War when he was singing, Russians have children too. So the corporate leaders have children too and grandchildren. They think also about sustainability. So let's mobilize them. I mean, this is the famous uh, <coughs> Huila and uh, Senge uh, ladder to move from no compliance to uh, compliance, beyond compliance, and uh, to reach the integrated strategy of sustainability to, to be mission-oriented. These are stages of moving from no unsustainable to sustainable company. So this is the, the ideal picture. What are the, if we use the regulations and pressure, we'll have very often the vicious cycles. The corporations uh, resist governmental regulations. They use lobby money. I remember the case uh, uh, with the clean car introduction in California. Remember, they spent, I mean, three, uh, big three spent quarter billion dollars to oppose the regulations. What they gained, I guess, three, uh, two or three years extension of the deadline. But the Japanese and the German and the Volvo say, no, we will do this. <coughs> so instead of wasting time, you know, they decided to invest uh, in sustainability. And this is the virtue cycle. We were talking today, to, uh, yesterday, today, about the values. Exactly, this is the paradigm shift to move, to build different culture corporate culture oriented on sustainable value, protection of uh, human rights, protection of environment, and uh, securing, of course, uh, uh, shareholders' uh, benefits. So we need <laughs> to keep human in mind. And we, we, uh, we see that investing in sustainability reduced to uh, uh, cost. I used to work with Bob Bringer, vice president of 3M, he was telling 95% of cases of pollution are associated with the waste of resources. Hey, get rid of pollution, you'll be more efficient. It brings rest extra revenues, extra, extra profit, and new customers. If you are clean, <coughs> have good image, people are buying. Increase profits, then it gives you opportunity to reinvest. So I mentioned corporate culture. So it means that we are institutionalizing value. So this is why I like uh, emergence of uh, new science, sustainability science. They started the journal 2005, and one of the first publications, our colleague, uh, Joachim, uh, uh, Joachim Spangenberg, Mm -hmm. from Germany proposed the four-dimensional sustainability approach. He introduced what we discussed here and uh, all the other days, institutions, which really keep protect the, the values, the justice, the care, the democracy. This is why building corporate culture transform us toward, oh, I mean, this four dimensions. This is what, since that time, I am arguing that we should have uh, not the triple bottom line, as Elkington proposed some time ago, to operationalize the concept of sustainable development, but quadruple bottom line, which will include institutions or culture, whatever you will call it, but, you know, it's, which is linked with values. Okay, so... Uh, we discussed this is one of the problems that the multinational corporations are so big that it's difficult to 
it was impossible to control uh, 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 by the country. Even the United States or European Union have problems to really correct the uh, unsustainable or uh, controversial practices. It's not that easy. I, I was watching the uh, big uh, uh, information companies hearing in U.S. Senate. You know, it was disgusting, you know, by the way, you know. So, but, you know, they came, they came polite. I, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the, the chief, uh, the chief executive officer of uh, Facebook even brought his, uh, uh, I mean, the, the business dress code with tie, and I haven't seen him before, you know, wearing jacket and tie, you know. He was very po polite. So, I mean, they're, they're the big countries, you know, still have power, and the European Union, but small country, they will ignore. So, uh, the, we don't have the type of powerful global institutions which will really force them. So, this is why we need to use these internal forces, and also the peer pressure among them. So, there are several elements, you know, of the uh, uh, peer pressure and organizations, initiatives, which are uh, focusing on these internal forces. One of the first organizations, I mean, I'm proud of this because I know Steve Young from Minnesota, a very honest businessman, uh, made good, honest money and invested in the Koch stable from the Switzerland. They had the first meeting in 86. <laughs> then we have World Business Council, 92, ethical corporations since 2001, I guess. In fact, you know, just, you know, a few days after the announcement of IPC report, they say they devoted uh, to the next uh, conference in May uh, 2019, it's time to lead, innovate, engage, and collaborate to respond to IPCC. Sure. Okay, good. Okay, so then you have UN Compact and uh, e initiative this moving, particularly India, like you know, like the um, tornado creating share uh, uh, value movement after the concept order. So these are examples of uh, the global compact. What is important? The Accenture survey introduced. Uh, I mean, the data showing that 90% of chief executive officers uh, believe that sustainability is important for company profit. And 72 of them believe that investing in education is good investment for the corporation. So, it means, you know, they encourage them to invest in, uh, in entrepreneurship. So, the same on, we see significant response in academia. I mean, this is an example, you know, I agree with Olivia that uh, academia often is a, a problem, uh, not solution. But we have pretty good response from uh, business school, at least in the US. I'm working in Poland, you know, to get them involved, you know. So, uh, they at least do this business, sustainable development one, uh, how to comply with regulation, but there is a movement to, and this is already a ser, uh, ser, uh, accreditation requirement uh, for uh, AACSB. Now there is a second, and uh, we were working to make the second uh, uh, level to zero uh, market transformation to move toward the up to the uh, uh, Willard Senge uh, ladder, you know, to, to sustainable business. So this is what I started teaching last year at uh, Kozminski. We tried to spread up and make the obligatory standard within AACSB. Okay, so uh, this is why we should uh, do uh, 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 move uh, in our school toward teaching this type of uh, courses, which shape the new leadership not only in, for business, but also in public sector. We need entrepreneurs in public sector too, because we have limited resources. They need to be creative, as the same in the civic uh, sector. So this is, we need to in, uh, encourage to invest in uh, human and social capital, move to quadruple bottom line, 
and creating, uh, popularizing this concept, which Zlatko was telling also yesterday, creating shared values. Okay, so, I mean, this is an example we used uh, the British, they operationalized the uh, sustainable development into five types of capital. And so, and then this is an example of the sh creating <coughs> shared values, you know, how to make profits in a sustainable way, uh, resolving environmental uh, health, employee skills, worker safety, water use, and so on, problem. So we have, we have some tools, and then we need to do to meet the, uh, the 17 uh, goals, and this is the carrot. I think that David was, uh, Frank was talking at a uh, different meeting, you know. The carrot is to business. Well, if you will be sustainable, if you will be contributing uh, to uh, implementation of 17 sustainable goals, there is a big stake of 12 trillion dollars by year 2030. Uh, the earlier you enter, the easier you will get it. So this is, you know, I mean, I want you to challenge this stuff. I want you to also uh, give responses. How make business responsive without being corrupt? How they, uh, political leaders should work with business? How NGOs should be involved without getting corrupt? So there are many questions uh, 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 you could raise and you could give answers. Thank you.